Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be solving this equation here. We've got tan of 7x minus sine of 6x equals cos of 4x minus cot of 7x. And of course, this is without a calculator. If you want to have a go at solving this equation here, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. And I'm going to dive straight into a solution. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is bring the tan and the cot onto the left hand side and bring the sine onto the right hand side and write everything in terms of just sine and cos. So the right hand side of my equation is just going to be sine of 6x plus cos of 4x. And on this side, I'm going to get tan of 7x, which is sine of 7x over cos of 7x plus cot of 7x, which is going to be plus cos of 7x over sine of 7x. Okie dokie, cool. Now this left hand side here, I'm going to, because these are kind of similar terms, I'm going to and they're both fractions, I'm going to put them under the same denominator. And in doing that, my denominator would just be sine of 7x times cos of 7x. And on the top, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get sine squared of 7x plus cos squared of 7x. And just using the Pythagorean identity, that is just 1, which is quite nice. And this right-hand side says the same. That's what it's sine of 6x plus cos of 4x. Okay, cool. Now what we can notice is that this bottom here is sine of 7x times cos of 7x. And if I to multiply it by 2, then this is the double angle formula for sine of 14x. Uh, but obviously I can't just multiply that by 2, so I'm also going to put a 2 on the top here. And so we get that 2 over sine of 14x equals this guy here. But in fact, if I just multiply both sides by sine of 14x, I get 2 equals sine of 14x multiplied by sine of 6x plus cos of 4x. Awesome, lovely. Now, how do we proceed from here? At first glance, it seems quite difficult to proceed from here. But actually, upon further inspection, we see that sine of anything is always going to be between 1 and minus 1. And this term here in the brackets, it's sine of something plus cos of something. So that's going to always be between minus 2 and 2. And so that tells us if I multiply a number which is uh, with magnitude less than or equal to 1 with a number with magnitude less than or equal to 2, and it equals 2, that must mean that both of these guys here attain their largest magnitude. So in other words, this guy here must be plus or minus 2, and this guy here must be plus or minus 1. And that's the only possible way that those can multiply to give me 2. So either this one's 1 and this one's 2, or this one's minus 1 and this one's minus 2. So we actually just have two separate cases to check. So let's first check the plus and plus case. So if this guy here is 1, so case 1, sine of 14x is 1, and then each of these guys here has to be have to be positive 1. So sine of 6x is 1, and cos of 4x is 1. Okay, well let's actually focus on this condition here. Let's quickly just sketch a cos graph. So this is just maybe t and then cos t here. And now what do we notice if it's 1? Well, t is going to be either 0 or 2 pi, or if we continue to draw it, 4 pi and whatever else. So t is just going to be some even multiple of pi. And so t here, well, it was actually just 4x. So we get the 4x must be some even multiple of pi. And so therefore, x must be n pi over 2. But the issue with that is if I then substitute that into here, I get sine of 6x just to be sine of 3n pi. But any multiple of pi or sine of any multiple of pi is 0. So it can't be 1. So in fact, case 1 here gives us no solutions for x. All we have to do now is check case 2 when this is minus 1 and each of these are minus 1. OK, so in this case, we have all of the, these important terms being minus 1. And again, we're going to start from this fact here. So again, just quickly draw, drawing a cos graph. Uh, when is cos 4x minus 1? Well, it's when x or 4x is an odd multiple of pi. So either it's um, pi or it's 3 pi or it's you know whatever else. So we get that 4x equals 2n plus 1 times pi, where here n is an integer. Could be negative as well. Um, and so this tells us that x must be 2n plus 1 pi over 4. 
Okie dokie, cool. But remember, x we're assuming is somewhere between 0 and pi, so there's actually only a few values of n uh, that we could have here, so maybe n is 0, in which case we get pi over 4. Or if n is 1, we get 3 pi over 4. Or if n is 2, 5 pi over 4. Or if n is 3, we get 7 pi over 4. The next one would be 9 pi over 4, but that's bigger than 2 pi, so we're not interested. Okay, so that kind of satisfies this condition. What about these two? Well, we can just kind of manually check them. Uh, hopefully, it's not too difficult to see that if we plug in, um, if we look at this condition here with, let's go with this guy, what do we get? Well, we get sine of 6 times 3 pi over 4, which is sine of 18 pi over 4, or 9 pi over 2. Now, 9 pi over 2, well, that's 4.5 pi, and I can subtract off multiples of 2 pi from that. So that's just going to be the same as sine of pi over 2, but sine of pi over 2 is 1. And so, therefore, 3 over 4 pi is not a valid solution. You get a very similar argument when you look at 7 pi over 4. You also get sine of 6 times 7 pi over 4 is 1 as well. And you can just manually check these two guys here. They satisfy this guy and they satisfy this guy here as well. And so therefore these are our only two solutions to this equation. So we started off with a pretty interesting equation involving tan, cot, sine and cos. And using a very nice trick that you've got something times something and thinking about their magnitudes, we can narrow it down to two cases. We check the first case, there are no solutions. And in this case, we get just two solutions, pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. And those are our two solutions to this problem. I hope this video has made sense and I hope you've enjoyed slash learned something from this video as well. Thank you so much for watching. Please do give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.